we're going to do bathroom cleaning today. This is in a small version of a bathroom, but it applies the same no matter the size of the bathroom. These kind of steps should be followed. So first things first, of course, we're going to put our gloves on. And I'm going to kind of start with an idea of top down. So I'm going to start first here with the Swiffer Duster. And I'm just going to go around the top of the bathroom just to remove any cobwebs that are present. And then if you see anything on the wall as you go, you can bring it down through the corners like this. Like if you come down, just kind of, just to make sure you're getting everything off. Because as you can see up in these vents, they carry a lot of dust. So they should be looked at daily, maybe not cleaned every day, but they should be looked at daily to make sure there's nothing in them. And then, like I said, just coming down through the walls. This bathroom's kept pretty clean, pretty daily, so it kind of gives you an idea of how a lot of our bathrooms are going to look as you go. We're gonna start now with the sink. I'm gonna go over exactly what we use on the sink as far as cleaners go. These are the blue cloths that we have to use when we're cleaning in bathrooms. Uh, never green, it's always blue. We have our glass cleaner here. Our barkeeper's friend, which is like a sink cleaner, if things get a little bit scummy and built up or if there's brown marks, and especially around taps where it can build up, this will help remove that, hard water marks especially. And then the Freedom of Biorozyme is something that we use daily. Um, it's used on to uh, sinks and toilets. First thing we want to do too is if they have things on their sink, just remove them from the sink so that you can do the, the cleaning and just keep the supplies you need to use. A lot of people when they're using these spray bottles like to keep it on a like a stream that shoots out more like in a line and I prefer for it to be more of a mist. So it sprays and covers more of the area. Otherwise, you're gonna just, it just doesn't do the same job. So make sure it's like on a, a mist that'll come out. I'm gonna find a place to put these so they don't get dirty. Set them down on my caddy. Now, you're gonna take this cloth here, blue cloth, after I've already applied the Freedom Solution, and give everything a really, thorough wipe. Again, this sink is pretty clean. We clean it pretty often, but you want to make sure if there is buildup, like take a look back here. Now this is kind of where we'll get a lot of buildup right in behind um, where the water sits. So if the water sits up in here, you can even see how there's some build up on there. I'll show you how we can use the barkeeper's friend. Just simply with a, generally like that, you put just a little, and since you got a glove, you don't have to worry about it. And just leave it on there. This will eventually take that right off. And on the other spot where it's good is if you ever wanted to use it in and around the lip of the sink there. Up on the tap part, you want to make sure that you buff that off and get into those spots where it can clean. So, you know, by putting your cloth on the side and just kind of giving it a good detailed wipe. If you take these steps every day, it just keeps it that much cleaner and it's a lot easier to maintain as opposed to having it build up. Now back there where I had the barkeeper's friend on, you can see it's taken that almost completely right out there. And if it doesn't happen in one day, you can use it, you know, a couple days in a row and it'll get better. But again, this is just kind of buffing it and polishing it up to make sure it's good. This here, you won't find these on many of the sinks that we do. But if you did, just kind of wrap that around, make sure the ring down here. This is a lot of times where people will go in and pour their coffee in the sink. So these stain right here. So you want to make sure that you're getting in the corners and the crevices and the edge there. Okay. That cloth is done. So keep a uh, dirty cloth bag that is handy that you can throw in. I am just going to give a quick wipe on the, this here has a cabinet front. 
and there are places that you'll have that. But because we do this so often, like I said, it doesn't take nothing to um, clean that up, and then that, that cloth is done. And I put these back on the sink, wherever they were. And then I'm going to now move on to the toilet. So you can see now that I, that cloth that I was using is gone um, in that bag, and I'm gonna grab another fresh one here. I'm gonna put the bowl cleaner in first. Now this is just a Lysol bowl cleaner that we use. Um, you don't need a lot of this. I'm gonna show you what the water should look like when you're done. And it's important not to put a lot in because this will sit for a while and it often stains in the bowl if left for too long. So that is more than enough. And you can kind of see that it's gonna run down in there. And then I'm gonna take my toilet brush and just give a good scrub. And this one's gonna come off there. I'm just gonna screw it back in. And again, you wanna make sure you get up and under the rim of the toilet. See that, that color right there in the toilet, that's, I would say, now see some of the stuff that was built up underneath here is falling down. So I'm actually gonna flush that. It's gonna be gone. Because I don't want that sitting in the toilet. The brush is gonna go away. I'm just gonna give a quick little addition here just to kind of kind of show that the bowl has been cleaned. A lot of clients will look to see if there is solution in the water. Um, so just keep that in mind if you do flush it down. I know a lot of toilets are automatic and they're going to flush it down anyway and then that's out of your hands, but try and keep some of the solution in the bowl. Now with the Freedom, I'm simply going to spray down the toilet, all areas here, even in behind, onto the top. And what I'm going to do is just begin to wipe these areas. Don't be afraid to use more than one cloth in these areas and always get in behind the toilet, especially in around these hinges is where it's really gonna build up. And in the areas where sometimes you have to put your finger in there or you might wanna grab a toothbrush like we have, you can wipe those areas. But you wanna be making sure that you're getting all of those hard to reach areas. See, a lot of these areas, what I like to do with the cloth Again, this toilet is pretty clean, but if you do go into a bathroom that is a little less clean, what I do is I kind of wipe the areas that aren't as dirty with one cloth, and then I'm going to switch to the other cloth for those areas that are, I call it like there's a lot of high traffic in those areas. So I'm just wiping the base of this toilet here. You can't see it, but what I was basically doing is on this side, over here, I was getting this completely cleaned up. These often get neglected, the bases of the toilets and down here, and this is where you'll find a lot of urine and things like that run down the front. If you have a smell in a bathroom, it's generally coming from areas like that that aren't getting good enough cleaned. So I'm gonna set that there, that cloth's gone. I'm gonna grab another one. Just to show you what I would do in a case where you ran into a bathroom and it's not as clean. So now down in here, I'm really gonna get into these tougher to reach areas. Move it around here. And on the seat on the underside. You really have to wipe it. You can't just give it, you can't just give it a one like that and you're done. It won't work. You're gonna find a lot of buildup. You gotta get into the corners and into those areas. And it's so much easier to do on a daily basis. If you do that every single day, when you're into some of these locations like multiple times, you won't, it, it'll fly. It'll take a lot less time than even I'm spending here, but because it's a training video, I'm showing you every small detail. But if you get into a routine and, and a habit, which I'm hoping everybody will, it's so much easier to, to do the cleaning. So that's your toilet there, completely done. You can see that even like, 
in these areas on the toilet, it's not, doesn't look wet or finished. If you come closely down to the base there, it's, it's shiny. That's how that should look. You don't want to have like a streaky area where you've wiped it and it looks wet and dry. You want it to look like that. So that's your, your upper area to wipe that down. That's your sink, that's your toilet. Um, and now I'm going to get rid of that cloth because it's no good to me. And I'm going to move along here to a uh, mirror, which we just have a tiny little one here, but I'm just going to give a quick little spray of the glass cleaner on that. And I'm going to grab a glass cloth for this. So just. So these are the glass cloths that we use on all of our windows and doors and things like that. I'm just gonna give this mirror final wipe. A lot of those mirrors um, in a lot of the contracts are obviously gonna be much bigger. And you want to make sure you get in the corners. It's always kind of like a outside and then inside. You know, wipe the frame, wipe along the ledge like that, and then you're essentially all done. Um, and outside of doing the floor, which we will do in another video, that is this bathroom fully cleaned.